Hello, this is Miss Morris here. Under normal circumstances at this time of year, we would invite you into school for our curriculum meeting where we would let you know a little bit more about what happens during your child's time in reception. Obviously, we're unable to do that this year. So instead, both myself and Miss Coles are going to take you through a series of slides that will just give you a little bit more information about the reception year and about things that we will be doing and also things that you might be able to help your children with at home. Before I start on the slides, I ju would just like to say from myself and Miss Coles how happy and pleased we are with the children and how they are settling down. So thank you so much for all of your help and support in preparing the children for coming to school. They're doing incredibly well so far. While your child is in reception, they will follow the early years curriculum, which is known as the early years foundation stage or the EYFS. There are seven areas of the EYFS, three prime areas, which can be brought into any other area at all, and also four specific areas. The prime areas are personal, social and emotional development, where the children develop skills in self-regulation, managing themselves and building relationships with others. Communication and language, where the children will develop skills in speaking, listening, attention and understanding. And the final prime area is physical development, where the children will develop large and small movements in climbing, running and when they're using tools such as pencils and scissors. The four specific areas are literacy, where the children develop word reading, comprehension and writing. Maths, which is about developing understanding of number and numerical patterns. Understanding of the world, which is investigating and understanding the things, places and people around them, including culture, past and present and the natural world. And finally, the last specific area is expressive arts and design, where the children will be using their imagination by performing and creating with a variety of media and materials. Hello, everybody. It's Miss Coles here and I am going to talk you through reading and phonics in reception. Now, the teaching of phonics is one of our most fundamental parts of our curriculum. They are the building blocks to your children being able to read and write. So we teach phonics every day in Starfish and Seahorses. And then we will do some literacy work, which will build on the work that we've covered in phonics. And your child will also read in a guided reading session with either the class teacher or the class TA twice a week. Now at Meal Brace, we follow the letters and sounds scheme for teaching phonics, which we supplement with the Jolly Phonics actions and songs. So if in the next few weeks your children come home and they start making sounds at you and doing funny things with their hands, these are the Jolly Phonics actions that we use to help reinforce the sounds that we teach the children. Now, if you would like to see what the actions are and if you would like to learn the songs that we sing with the children in school to help us remember the sounds, then I've popped a link on the slide in front of you and it will take you to YouTube where there is a video for every sound, including the song and the action to go with it. At school, we teach pure phonics and that means that when we're looking at letters, we teach the children about the sounds that the letters make rather than teaching them their letter names. Now, that's not to say that we don't teach them what all the letters are called. Of course we do. But in the context of our phonics, we focus purely on the sounds that letters are making. Now, that's because when your children come to apply their sounds in their reading and writing, they need to think about which letter they need to write that sound down. And if they think about what the letter is called, it doesn't match up to the sound it makes. 
So whenever you're reading or writing with your children, just try and remember it's the sound the letter makes that we need to think about rather than thinking about what the letter is called. As well as learning all the different sounds, which we call phonemes in phonics, we also teach the children about high frequency words, which are the words that we use lots and lots in our day to day reading and writing. And we teach them about tricky words. Now, tricky words are words that we can't sound out using our sounds, and that's what makes them tricky. So we teach the children that these are the words that we just have to recognise and remember what they are. And we do lots of practice around this as we move through the year. Now, you'll find in their reading diaries, we've stuck a list of the phase two and the phase three tricky words that your children will need to practice as we move through our phases and as we move through the year whilst they're reading. Now then, on the previous slide, I mentioned that when we're teaching phonics, we call the sounds that we use phonemes. Now, a phoneme is basically the sound that a letter or any group of letters makes. So we start with single letter sounds when we teach your children phonics and these are single letters that make a sound all on their own such as s, a and t. Then once we've built up our bank of single sounds we move on to looking at digraphs. Digraphs are where we have two letters working together to make one sound. For example on the slide we've got ch, sh and a. And then we also have trigraphs and trigraphs are where we have three letters working together to make one sound. So on the slide, we've got I, air and ear. Now, these are really important because when your children are reading and writing, they need to be able to distinguish between when they need a single letter, a digraph or a trigraph. They need to be able to spot these when they're reading and then they need to be able to recall them for when they need to write a sound down in their writing. Now, I know that I've given a very quick explanation there of the key parts of phonics and it's a lot to get your head around. So please don't worry if you're sat there thinking, oh my gosh, Miss Coles, I haven't got a clue what you're on about. That's absolutely fine. Um, our literacy coordinator, Miss Jones, will be putting together a presentation for you to access online, which will be a much more detailed and in-depth look through the letters and sounds scheme of work for phonics. She'll give you a breakdown of each of the phases, each of the sounds within those phases, how to pronounce those sounds correctly, and how to help support your children in spotting their single letter sounds, their digraphs and their trigraphs when they're reading and writing. Once your children have learnt their first few sounds, they'll be ready to start using them to help them segment and blend to help them read and write. Now I'm just going to go through a few examples here just so you've got an idea of the kind of strategies we use in school and how you could use similar strategies at home to help your children with their reading. So top word, we've got a CVC word here, which is basically a three letter word and it's made up of three single sounds. So when we're working with your children, we would get them to segment the word into their individual sounds or their individual phonemes. So we would do that by sounding each letter one at a time. So we've got k, a, t, k, a, t. And that is segmenting a word into its sounds. And then to help us read that word, we blend those segmented sounds together. So we've got at cat. Okay, now the second word down you will see that we have got a digraph. Now, what we teach the children to do is to recognize that we've got a digraph, so we have to remember that we're going to read these first two letters as one sound 
because it's a digraph. And then we're going to read our last two letters as single sounds. So we've got sh, ot, shot. So we can segment it into sh, ot. And then we can blend those sounds together into shot. And then lastly, down at the bottom, we've got an example of how we would segment and blend a word with a trigraph in. So we've got a single sound to start, and then we've got our I, G, H trigraph, making the I sound. So if we segmented it first, we'd read I, and then we could blend those two sounds together to make high, I, high. Now again, I realise that's a very quick explanation of how we segment and blend in school. And of course, there will be more information on this in Miss Jones's Letters and Sounds presentation. Um, but hopefully that's enough to help you get started in supporting your children with reading their books at home. As I mentioned before, your child will have two guided reading sessions in school a week. One session will be with the class teacher and the second session will be with the class TA. Now, as well as these sessions, we also make the most of any opportunity we get to read with your children individually. So we ask that reading diaries and reading books are in school every day so that they're ready for us to use whenever we get the chance and whenever we need them. If you read with your children at home, we also really appreciate it if you can make a note in their reading diaries to show when you've done this. Now, please don't feel that you have to write a big, long comment every time that you do. If everything's gone well and your child has read well, you can literally just pop the date in and sign it next to it to show that you've read with them. Um, the only thing that would be really beneficial for you to write in there really is if there are any sounds that your child has struggled to recall or any aspect of their reading that they've been finding tricky, just make a note of that in the reading diary for us. And then the next time we read with your child, we can see that in there and make sure we pick it up with them in school. And you'll see on the slide in front of you, I've put a little example of the kind of thing you might write in your reading diaries. Your child's reading books will be changed in school once a week every Friday. Now, I know that that makes it sound like they've got the same book for a long time, but repetition and building familiarity with books is the key to helping your children learn to read. So lots and lots of practice with the storybooks that we send home will be fabulous. In these reading books, if you have a look on the inside cover, it will give you a breakdown of the sounds that are covered in the story. And it will also give you some practice words that you can segment and blend with your children before you get going on the whole book. And then on the back cover, you will also find that it will give you some questions that you could ask your child about the story you've read together. Now, this book talk and discussion around what's actually happened in the story is equally as important as them being able to read the words. So please do make the most of any opportunity you get to chat about what's actually happened. So you could discuss how characters are feeling. You might discuss why they've done certain things. Anything around that when you're sharing books is invaluable. Now, we always say that little and often is the very best way to help your children learn to read. So even if it's as short as a five minute practice together, that really will make the world of difference. And please don't feel like it's got to be a chore. Any kind of reading or sharing of books that you do with your children will be brilliant. So it might be that they read their school book to you. It might be that you do it that they read a page and you read a page. It might be that you read one of your own books from home and you read that to the children and you can discuss what's happened in it together. Absolutely anything you want to do, as long as it's building a really positive attitude towards their reading and getting them excited by books, anything like that will be invaluable. Your brace when the children are writing they will follow the letter join scheme 
we follow the early years part of the letter join scheme. And first of all, we'll focus on patterns and then basic letter shapes. And we link these to the sounds that we're working on in our letters and sounds phonic sessions. Here on this screen, you can see this is how we would form each letter. It shows you the starting place and then the direction in which you need to go to form the letter. We are incredibly lucky at Mealbrace because we have our own forest school site within the school grounds. Now, starting from next week, week commencing the 21st of September, seahorses will begin their forest school sessions for Tuesday in the Trees every Tuesday. And starfish will begin our Forest Thursday sessions on Thursday. Now, these will run every week unless you hear otherwise. So we go out in any kind of weather. The only weather we can't take the children out in is high winds because that brings health and safety issues with being in tall trees in that kind of weather. But otherwise, whether it's pouring with rain, whether it's snowing, we will be outside and having lots and lots of fun. Now, because of this, your children will need to become, will need to come to school properly clothed to be able to be outside in those kinds of weather and still be nice and comfortable. So on the side in front of you, we've put a breakdown of the kinds of clothes that they need to have with them for different times of the year. Now, you'll see in the summer list, We've put that they still need to have long trousers and long sleeved tops on. And that's because we don't want them to get scratched by walking through the trees or walking through long grass in that time of year. So I know it's tempting to send them in in shorts and short sleeved t-shirts when the weather's nice and hot. But please remember on those days, they still need to have their arms and legs covered. Now, on the day that your child has forest school, they can come to school in their forest school clothes and they won't need to have their uniform with them to change back into afterwards. They can stay in their forest school clothes all day. Now, because we're going in the morning, it would be fabulous if your children could come fully clothed and ready to go. So that would include having their waterproofs and their wellies on especially when we get into the wetter, colder weather. And then we can just do the register and get straight outside to have lots of fun. Now, when we get back from our sessions, your children will need to have a named plastic bag that we can put their waterproofs and wellies into, ready for them to take home at the end of the day. They'll also need a nice clean pair of shoes that they can change into out of their wellies so that we're not trampling mud all through the school. If you've got any questions about anything that they might need for forest school, please don't hesitate to ask us. But the key things are to remember that they can come to school dressed for forest school and they don't need to get changed into their uniform afterwards. They can stay in those clothes all day. PE and reception will be outside whenever it's possible. Um, because we aim to do PE outside as much as we can, it will be weather dependent. So there's no set day for doing PE. Therefore, it's best if the PE kits can be in school on a Monday and stay in school all week so that it's there for whichever day we need it. Your child will need a PE t-shirt in the house colour from school. Uh, black or navy shorts and jogging bottoms, plus a pair of trainers. In school, any work that your children do will be going into one of three different books. So anything that's got a literacy focus, that will include their phonics and their reading, that will go in their literacy books. Anything to do with number or shape or measures will go in their maths books. And then anything else that they do, whether it's a bit of recorded work or whether it's a photograph of something that they've done that we've taken and an observation that we've written about them, that will go in their learning journeys. 
Now, ordinarily, we would be encouraging you to come in and share their learning journeys with them and to take them home so you can contribute to them too. But unfortunately, with things the way they are at the moment, this isn't something we can do just now. Though, obviously, we hope that it won't be like this for very long and we will get to a point where we can share all of these brilliant things with you. Now, one thing you can contribute is by completing one of the WOW stars. Now, on Friday, your children will be bringing home a sheet of WOW star templates in their book bags. And these are for you to write on whenever your child does something special or fabulous at home. So, for example, you might want to share with us if they've been incredibly kind or helpful or if they've done something like going to their first swimming lesson or losing their first tooth, or if they've made an achievement like managing to stay in their bed on their own all night or learning to tie their shoelaces. Anything like this, if you could write it down on one of the wow stars and include your child's name on the front, cut it out, send it into school with them and then we will share this with the rest of their class during carpet time and then they will go up on a special display that we both have in our classrooms called our wow walls and this is just a really nice way to share achievements that we don't that we make not only in school but also that we can make at home with our families now, if you have a particularly fabulous child, which I'm sure lots of you have got, and you've run out of wow stars, just ask, just let us know, and we can send home some more. While your child is in reception, we will record their progress and development throughout the year in something called a profile. And then towards the end of the reception year in June, we will record your child's attainment against the reception early learning goals and details of these early learning goals are on all of the next slides. The following slides show the early learning goals for your children. These are the long term aims for them to try and achieve by the end of reception. At Meal Brace, we have decided to become an early adopter of the new early learning goals. The new early learning goals will be rolled out across the country to all schools with children of reception age in autumn 2021. By becoming an early adopter, we have decided to take on the early learning goals a year earlier and work towards them. The early learning goals over the next few slides will cover all of the seven areas previously talked about in the early years curriculum, the EYFS. The first early learning goal is in the area for communication and language, and it has two strands, listening, attention and understanding and speaking. And these are the goals that the children will try and work towards. The next early learning goal is in the area of physical development and it covers those large body movements known as gross motor skills and smaller movements known as fine motor skills. The next early learning goal is in the prime area of personal, social and emotional development and the three strands where the children will work in this area are self-regulation, managing self and building relationships. The first of the four specific early learning goal areas is literacy. Literacy has three strands, that's comprehension, understanding what is being read, word reading and writing. The second specific area for the early learning goals is maths. There are two strands here. The first is number and the second numerical patterns. 
third specific area for the early learning goals is understanding the world. There are three different strands here, past and present, people, culture and communities, and the natural world. The final of the four specific areas for the early learning goals is that of expressive arts and design. There are two strands for expressive arts and design, the first being creating with materials and the second is all about being imaginative and expressive. Please could you help us in school by putting your child's name into everything, including their shoes and on their water bottle. That would be really helpful when we're giving out things at the end of the day and trying to sort out everyone's belongings. Thank you. Also a huge thank you for listening and for reading. I hope that all of the information will be useful to you. Miss Coles and myself are really looking forward to seeing how the children develop and grow throughout the year um, and we're really looking forward to spending lots of time with them. Hopefully this information you can look at and look through as many times as you want to and just have a greater understanding about what your child will be doing through the year. Thank you.